So today, I want to talk to you guys about the new-ish, it's probably, well, I guess they're over a year old now, uh, new for most people, uh, counter-depth Bosch refrigerator. So counter-depth, like uh, most uh, of the industry now, means that you have a, a, a box that's roughly 24 inches, and then the doors, and in some cases the door and the seal, uh, sit proud of the cam or cabinetry. That part sticks out so that's normal um that not to be confused with uh built in and fully integrated like this um like this uh thermidor uh built-in refrigerator here where it's completely flush at 25 inches most counter refrigerators in addition, being, in addition to being shorter uh you know the doors are going to stick out about three plus inches. Um, so this counter depth line, this is, again, it's not a built-in re refrigerator. You can kind of, you know, you can bring your cabinetry forward. Uh, you can wrap it in cabinetry on the side and make it look like a built-in refrigerator, but it, it's not a built-in. These are probably, I, I would say most of these things on average last about five to 10 years. Um, and of course you can get them to live longer. Uh, the question is you'll, you'll have a probably an expensive repair towards the end of that uh, of that life cycle and you know you'll either decide at that point to to repair it or replace it uh, and of course what manufacturers have done is they've increased the cost of the um, of the componentry and then they've made it in some cases more difficult to repair so you know you figure a li average labor charge is about 185 dollars in this in the dc market that i'm in uh so 185 dollars per hour and if it takes a few hours to do the repair you know the, you're, you're talking almost 600 dollars in um in labor and then you know a part that should probably cost eighty dollars they're going to charge you like 380 dollars so you're just going to decide you know what do i want to do I want to put that much money into a product that may only have a few additional years of life into it? And of course, a lot of the more knowledgeable service techs might say, hey, you know, this thing might have some other major failure in the next few years. And in a lot of cases, you just go replace it. Now, the, the built-in refrigerators, that's like buying, instead of the, let's say, the the, the netbook, which, which you'll replace after a few years, the MacBook, you're going to have it for a much longer time, higher in componentry, much larger compressors. You have a, a longer warranty in most cases. Cases, these have a 12-year warranty um, and clearly uh, you know if you're if you're looking to have something that will live longer and not end up in a landfill this is this is probably the more responsible uh, choice these can be integrated into cabinetry in most cases and then um, and of course they can also be uh, you can order stainless steel variations or put stainless steel panels um, but cost wise you're, you're paying for two or three refrigerators all at one time here um, so it's not like there's a great savings, but you know, obviously this is a this is a really cool look. The fact that it's flush, and of course you have more usable space in a built-in refrigerator than you do in a freestanding, and obviously the build quality of the shelving and things is, uh, tends to be nicer. Now that being said, let's go back over to this Bosch. Sorry to get uh, sidetracked. Uh, this uh, counter-depth refrigerator is. Kind of new for Bosch. So so typically um, when you're looking at freestanding refrigeration. Uh, there is no such thing as a dual compressor refrigerator. There is dual evaporator refrigeration at this at this level or this price point. Um, dual evaporators meaning that you have your refrigerator and freezer uh, not sharing air. They're uh, they're kind of separate from one another, and you'll have an evaporator specific to the freezer and an evaporator specific to the uh, refrigerator. Um, now they're sharing coolant, so in most cases your your evaporator and the freezer it might be set at let's say negative 10 in your evaporator and the refrigerator is also set at negative 10. Um, but you don't have that constant dry airflow from the uh, refrigerator. So your produce will last or live a little bit longer. Now we go to a, uh, a built-in sub-zero where they've got two separate cooling systems, two evaporators, two compressors. There, the humidity in the refrigerator is a lot higher. That, um, that uh, evaporator may be at a much warmer uh, temperature, uh, I have no idea. I'm going to guess it's in the 20s or 30s. And consequently, your produce will live two or three times longer with all that uh, extra uh, humidity in the environment. Um, so if you're going to mom's organic grocery and you're buying a lot of fresh produce and it's open, like that's a that's a great investment. Uh, what's unique with the Bosch freestanding counter refrigerator, these 72-inch tall 
models uh, is that they do have dual compressors according to Bosch. So um, that's really cool. Um, I believe that these are made in China and you know obviously they are relatively new uh, so we don't know what the reliability will be like on a product like this. Um, but uh, considering their price point is, is fairly reasonable and it's in line with a lot of their competitors, uh, it's, a, it's a great value. And you know, a couple of things that I like to see in more premium counter refrigerators are things that, that we must always see in a, in a built-in. So when I pull the drawers out, it's not just a plastic uh, slider or, or a plastic nylon wheel. Uh, we have metal tracks, or in some cases we have slow close I don't think this is slow close, but it is on metal tracks, which is which is kind of nice. I do like seeing that kind of. Let me see it. Um, what's also kind of neat with this model is that the uh, you know, the gaskets around those those um, Vitafresh or those crisper bins is really kind of fantastic. Uh, just like a uh, some of the more expensive built-ins, we can go in and uh, and select a climate that is specific to the type of produce that we wanna we wanna keep in there. Um, so that that is temperature, and then it's also you know, trying to maintain a specific amount of uh, humidity in there for your fresh vegetables, um, or maybe no humidity for uh, for things like meat and fish. Um, you also have. Uh, some Wi-Fi connectivity with this, like a lot of other refrigerators. So I guess one of the advantages is that you might be able to go in remotely and do that. I'm guessing that's what that little Wi-Fi uh, icon is there. Um, but just when we're talking about the quality, at least I do like uh, these these uh, kind of glass sensor touch controls. I like the way that these are constructed. Yeah, I like those gaskets. It feels nice and solid. Here again on this little. A platter tray here. Uh, this is also on metal rollers. The plastics feel good. Maybe not great, but pretty decent. Uh, stainless steel on the back wall, stainless steel on the trim. Um, because these are split shells, you will have arms that kind of hang down and eat up some real estate. Um, but it looks like they've trimmed out those arms. So they're, they're I guess they're trying to take up minimal space in this. Uh, they also give you this really cool little rail. Now I've hung it at the top of the refrigerator. It could also, I guess, go at the bottom, but you know, you can hang things from that rail, rail like this, um, this little bottle insert here. Um, just to show you guys how it works. So you can see it's got a little thingy. It hangs off that flex bar that we're, they're calling it. Uh, you've got another shelf here, another shelf there. We've got some pickles. Um, and that's kind of neat as well. Uh, LED uh, rope lights tucked into the, uh, to the left and right side of the refrigerator. Some LED lighting at the top. Uh, some fairly responsive sensor controls up here. Uh, there's our eco button, vacation, fresh, super, which probably drops this down to 36. Let's see what happens if I select it. 37, I guess, nothing fancy there. Um, you also have a super for the freezer, which should, I don't see it really doing anything to the display. Maybe it's because it's in demo mode. Uh, and then we've got, let's see, a menu button. It looks like we can go in and do certain things, uh, light settings, uh, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, and then of course, Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, but yeah, that's uh, again, very responsive, very slick uh, sensor controls. Uh, door shelves don't look like they give you a ton of flexibility, but you know what? You're, you're only going to be able to put so many things in there, and these look decent. Uh, the, the quality of the plastics here seems quite good. It's a nice, thick Lexan plax, uh, appears to be Lexan plastics, a uh, little stainless uh, or faux stainless accents uh, on, the, on the shelves themselves. And, and all about like a really good looking fridge. Um, now, most refrigerators come with ice and water in the door. Um, you know, and, and a countertop refrigerator, that might not be a good idea. And not just for reliability. Typically when you're looking at these newer refrigerators with ice and water in the door, um, that is going to be something you're gonna consistently see where there's a, there's probably a failure, right? Uh, it's making ice inside the refrigerator. Typically it's not freezing that ice at like below zero. It's gonna be in the, in the low 20s. If you leave the door open while you're loading the groceries, the ice starts to melt and then you close the door, it recongeals into a big 
chunk of ice, then you press on that button to move the auger and uh, potentially it causes a failure. Uh, but, but all of that aside, um, you know, it's a counter depth. You're, you're, you're losing about five inches of depth from the, from this thing. So, um, by having that entire door eaten up, which is what happens in most cases, um, with your ice bucket, you're, you're taking a good chunk of storage away. So this does not have ice and water uh, in the door as an option. It does give you a little chilled water button here that you can press. Uh, and then of course, old school ice bucket in the, um, in the freezer, which we'll look at next. And there's a little picture that I give you of what the ice looks like. Nice, opaque ice. Uh, get yourself a clear ice machine if you can afford it and you've got place for it. But if not, this thing looks like it makes a lot of ice. Um, I think a big issue a lot of European manufacturers have had in the US is that they don't make a ton of ice and the ice cubes are kind of small. So it looks like they've, they've made it hold more ice. Um, now this, is on nylon runners. Uh, upper basket here is on metal tracks. Of course, the main assembly is on metal tracks like most refrigerators, but it all feels reasonably well made. Uh, doesn't, doesn't feel super chintzy. Um, you do have this little divider that you can slide left and right, and it, it feels like, it, you know, from a tolerance standpoint, you've got really tight tolerances. There's not a lot of wobbliness to things. Um, and I, and I say, you know, comparing it to a comparable GE or LG or Samsung product, this appears to be reasonably well made. And, um, I, I would definitely consider, um, getting one of these. This is available, by the way, we're showing it in the black stainless. It's available in a, um, in a traditional stainless steel with a coated, uh, finish. Um, it's also available with kind of restaurant or chunky or pro style handles, similar to the, uh, Bosch's Thermador equipment that you see over there. So if you're buying the Thermador kitchen and you want, uh, you don't want to spend the money on a built-in, you could get a pro handled, um, uh, Bosch that, that should complement that, that, uh, Thermador package. Uh, remember that this is not a 70 inch box. It is a 72. So like KitchenAid, uh, or Gen Air's counter depth refrigerators, this one is a little bit taller. Um, the hinges on this, they, they do seem to get this thing to bind quite easily. I think this display needs to come out a little bit further, but be careful about placing things next to this. There's not a lot of clearance here. So, uh, that door will hit. Uh, your counters if you're not careful. So make sure that your kitchen designer is paying close attention to the clearances and their specifications. Um, but all in all, um, I, this is probably one of my uh, new favorite counter depth refrigerators. I believe um, Gen Air and KitchenAid as of uh, today are, are, I think, out until like maybe March of next year uh, with back orders. Uh, these seem to be shipping pretty pretty uh or fairly often uh although they had issues at the end of last year with availability um definitely would say consider it and put it on your on your list of things uh this style of handle obviously matches other bosch equipment um you can see the bosch handle here uh again you can get that pro handle option which is similar to this um looks like it would also complement the ge profile or anything that has this kind of flatter uh, rectangular looking handle. Uh, you can see the profile range and uh, ovens here. It doesn't look too dissimilar. So you could mix and match those if you want. Uh, we do a lot of profile cooking because profile gets great reviews in their, in their cooking products. Uh, but then might, you know, in a lot of cases we might do a Bosch uh, pocket front or a bar front dishwasher, which does seem to complement the profile products. Um, we could do the same thing here with this, uh, with this new counter depth fridge. So if you guys have any uh, questions or you'd like me to comment on other things, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please give me the thumbs up, like, and of course, subscribe if you wanna see more videos um, and uh, share. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.